lecture number 10 and here we will discuss in detail about total probability and Bayes theorem. So total probability we will discuss from this uh, perspective of partition of sample space that will lead to partition of a uh, event any event partition of any event so from there we will try to find probability of that event with respect to partition of the sample of space and, and this total probability it would have a really interesting application in the process of uh, what uh, finding uh, updated probability of posterior probability with the help of Bayes rule that we will see it here so one restatement of uh, conditional probability we had already seen in multiplication rule that uh, we know that if you are having two event a and b and b happens to be uh, observed first that means uh, b is coming through some parcel information then we define conditional probability of a given b uh, as a ratio of a probability of a intersection b divided by probability of b and after that we restated it into and here we put condition what is condition condition here is that probability of b must be non uh, greater than zero that means b must exist that's why we are saying that uh, we are having parcel information through b okay and it was restated as multiplication rule as joint probability of a intersection b happens to be equal to probability of b times probability of a given b so there are various perspectives this we simply call it multiplication rule and here again we put condition that is the probability of b it is happening first that's why probability of b would be greater than zero again here it is inherited property okay now we will say one more picture here today in the framework of wedge rule that i will discuss in this lecture so coming to outline of today's lecture first i would like to discuss about total probability then i will talk about Bayes rule and few more examples based on that we will discuss in detail so first we are coming to discuss about total probability what does it talk about so in order to discuss total probability first we need to discuss about partition of a sample of space and that partition of sample of space also leads to partition of any event of the sample of space so that concept is it is coming here okay so consider we are having a partition of sample of space having the member b1 b2 b, bn these are defining partition of a sample of space omega and what is meaning of partition by saying partition means that each member of the partition would be mutually exclusive or uh, mutually uh, simply we can say that mutually exclusion is each member of the partition must be mutually exclusive to other okay pairwise mutually, mutually exclusive what we observe it here next property it say that for being a partition if you take union of all the members then union would be uh, equal to sample of space that means we say that it is collectively exhaustiveness exhaust that means if you take union it simply uh, it uh, covers the complete sample of space if you take union of all these so only uh, <coughs> the uh, we do partition define in such a way first uh, a have to be satisfied then b have to satisfy and third uh, each bi is a non-empty that means there must be some outcome in bi there must be if you are defining a partition it is not like that you will come up with one member of partition that would have no outcome it is not like that that would be meaningful to uh, proceed with if such scenario is coming to you what you do you merge with next uh, uh, nearby partition member so uh, the number of partition member it will decrease because we don't bring any member of the partition which will have uh, no outcome it, it, that one is not uh, here uh, uh, it is not feasible simply we don't need to bring that kind of member of partition so that's where uh, third condition is also c condition c is also very much essential and simply we can call third condition is non emptiness okay so this one is a partition of so if you geometrically visualize then geometrically visualize like this way this one was your sample of space then you did a partition of this sample of space uh, okay 
so this so you have partition this sample space into uh, p portions b portions and if you take union of these again it will give back your sample space and you can see that there is a clear separation between any two member of the partition a clear separation and if you take any of the member bi then that would contain at least one outcome at contain definitely it can't be empty it, that must contain at least one outcome so that is the <coughs> definition of partition so we perform partition of a sample space and uh, after what what we do uh, here uh, we uh, we have to but by proceeding with this partition of the sample space uh, we that uh, the partition of the sample space it will leads to a partition of any event if you are taking any any general event arbitrary event from the sample space then the partition of uh, this sample space also leads to the partition of the corresponding event as well how it will happen it will happen like this way so you do what you do you take intersection of a with all the member of the partition so bi is are the member of partition member of a single partition so remember that in a sample space it is not like there, there would be always a unique partition uh, it depends upon your choice you may have infinitely many partition so everyone might be already gone through that Riemann integration the partition approach so like uh, if, if you are trying to partition a interval suppose you are taking simplest interval 0 1 so simplest partition that you take partition with three member x0 x1 and x2 x0 equal to 0 uh, x1 equal to 0.5 call it 0.5 or 1 by 2 and x2 equal to 1 another partition you can come then you equally divide into three part so there are various parts depends upon how many members would be sometimes members would be uh, three members uh, two members three members four members depends upon how many members you want to introduce so depends upon that uh, number of partition it will keep on increasing so it is not like that there is a single partition for a simple uh, simple space or like uh, interval so, uh, you can do various partition you can keep on even refinement as, as per your convenience it is totally based on your convenience uh, which would be easy for you okay so that's where first define the partition of sample space that will lead towards partition of the event whatever event you are taking from the sample space it will also define the partition of the event so we are defining partition of the event like this way that means if you take uh, yeah. intersection of each member of the partition of the sample space and then those would be mutually exclusive so they, you can see that this one is mutually exclusive with respect to this uh, for each i not equal to j okay so mutually exclusive is property we are saying that likewise if you take union of all these intersection of bi is with a then union would give what it would give a that we are calling it collectively exhaustiveness with respect to a it is exhausted to a we say that if you are taking union of all these then this a intersection pi uh, in the manner of union way it exhausted to a so that one is, that one is we are saying that collectively exhausted uh, again uh, uh, what we see that uh, third is to say that uh, each uh, bi <coughs> each bi uh, contain some outcome of a each bi must contain some outcome of a otherwise it would be meaningful to uh, proceed with otherwise if it is not containing what you do you can merge that uh, bi with a neighboring one nearest one uh, if it is not containing if that situation is there then just you need to merge with uh, near near one so that uh, number of partition member will decrease there would be no any issue just you have to deal with uh, uh, partition in such a way that uh, the meaning of sense of partition always uh, uh, always uh, uh, but follow all these three a b and c properties so uh, from that perspective you have to proceed with okay one simple uh, visualization i have taken from the venn diagram you can see it like this way so suppose you are having a sample space this we are calling it this one is the sample space we come up with one uh, first you what you do you uh, 
do a partition come up with a partition of sample of space with three member of the partition b1 b2 b3 okay so easily you can see that there is no common between b1 and b2 there is no common between b2 and b3 there is no common element between b1 and b3 okay so mutually uh, exclusive mutually exclusive nature is there now again if you take union of these the union of these it, it is giving collectively all containing all outcome of omega so that's why uh, it is also satisfying exhaustive mutually uh, uh, collectively exhaustiveness apart from that uh, it satisfies all three property a b c what i discussed now take any event after that what you do uh, this event you can see it like uh, uh, it is having outcome uh, intersect intersection with each one b1 b2 b3 so this a1 we are calling it uh, it is <coughs> intersection of a with b1 a2 we are calling it intersection of a with b2 and a3 we are calling it intersection of a with b3 so a1 a2 a3 it is forming a partition of uh, event a event a you can easily see that uh, this segment is a1 if you talk about a1 a1 is having no common element with outcome with a2 a2 is having no common outcome with a3 a3 is not having any common outcome with a1 likewise is uh, so mutually exclusive exhaust every property is filled mm, satisfied by a1 a2 a3 that's where uh, the partition of sample of space just also uh, bring out the partition of uh, event so that is the perspective but sometimes sometime may you may face this situation as well that uh, if you will come up with, you may come up with one event that would be confined to up to this it is not having any common element between uh, a and b3 so anyone would like to suggest what you will do in that case if you are coming with a suppose call this uh, event c call it c so what you will do and uh, what you will do in that case if you are having an event an event c which is having no outcome in this box so anyone would like to suggest what you what would be suggestion what would be effective um, partition anyone and uh, c intersection b3 it would be fine empty yeah it is yeah not like that uh, actually uh, rightly you pointed out but, but it is not uh, completely correct what you do if you are having uh, it is just uh, that partition uh, that borrowed from uh, sample space to event it is also highly dependent on event as well so uh, you are defining partition of sample space uh, just in order to solve a particular event problem related to particular event so also define partition uh, from the perspective of event as well so if you are having event like this way so in this case what you will see that you will see that the partition what you have done three partition there is no need of three partition you merge b2 and b3 together bring you just remove this line this just you need uh, <coughs> b1 and b2 there is no need of b3 in this case just uh, the partition of omega is having only uh, two members so that would be sufficient so it is meaningless to come uh, proceed with b3 that would be scenario and uh, after that you define uh, partition of corresponding event c so okay that is that also based on that uh, event you have to compromise with partition of the uh, sample of space as well so that you will get a desired result that is the situation here here there is no situation a yes, situation there you can see a is having common outcome with b1 b2 b3 so that's where very fine it will be a partition there but if you come with c kind of event then you, b3 is just uh, unwanted kind of partition we don't need that just we are removing it and we are writing b2 b3 together <coughs> as a b2 <coughs> So that is the perception to bring partition of a simple space. So why do you have to, based on the problem, you have to decide what partition would be there. From problem, problem, problem itself, you will come to know what would be the suitable partition. And sometimes we are calling it uh, this partition are various scenarios, different scenario. What scenario you want to come up with?
now next once we are in idea of partition of sample of space that uh, also implies the partition of the event as well so we can now define total probability so what is happening how uh, so here we can see that a is having a partition and a is now written as what uh, as a union of a intersection b1 union a intersection b2 union it will go on like this way union a intersection bn so how we can find probability of a in term of bis in term of bi okay and uh, corresponding probability conditional probability of for what uh, <coughs> uh, a given bi is with respect to each scenario definitely uh, we had already seen that this one was the partition of sample space okay partition of sample space calling it b1 we are coming with the, this partition this scenario so we are having enough information about this uh, bi's we know the probability of bi because we come up with this one so we are having idea of what is value of bi's so we know that from the problem you will come to know what is this one we know this what is this one okay then what we know we come up with an event so this is the event so if you come up with an event which is we know that in that case if we, we are coming with event then we also uh, due to that also we are having idea what is the probability of a given bi this idea also we will have we will have this idea due to that because partition of sample space leads to partition of event so that's why we will have idea of this one as well okay so we can calculate so, but we don't know the probability of a so how we can cal calculate probability of a we can calculate probability of a as what probability of uh, union of this partition member union of this partition member and we know that uh, each one happens to be mutually exclusive to other so simply here what will work here a principle of additive principle will work here additive thus you have to add the probability of each uh, a intersection bi and some pro some will vary from 1 to n there are n <coughs> partition of a <coughs> so it will vary from now further if you try to see this uh, probability it is talking about probability of a and bk jointly joint occurrence of a and bk so here smartly you have to convert this into multiplication rule uh, how you will convert because bi uh, these are the situation or scenario that you are uh, coming with you are coming with you have introduced this one you have introduced or problem has introduced problem uh, has given enough opportunity to introduce this one so you know the probability of bk so that's why bk is the partial information so you will uh, what factor this one into as probability of uh, bk type probability of a given bk so this will uh, this directly is coming as a multiplication rule and you are summing from uh, 1 to n okay there are k number of n number of partition that's way so this law we are calling it law of total probability or simply total probability that how you calculate so you know about bk also you know about probability of a given bk this would be given here easily based on that you can calculate probability of a this dot we are calling it uh, total probability law of total probability so i will take one example suppose there there are three machines that uh, makes part of part in a factory or at a factory and suppose we know the following manufacturing pro about manufacturing process what are the information so first information say that machine one that we call it m1 it makes 60 percent of the parts okay that's the probability of m1 is 0.6 machine 2 is making 30 percent of the parts that means probability of m2 is 0.3 machine 3 makes 10 percent of the parts then what does it mean the probability of m3 
is equal to 0.1 so usually you can see that uh, if there are 100 unit then 6 unit has been made by uh, m1 30, 60 unit has been made by m1 30 unit has been made by m2 and uh, 10 unit has been made by 3 uh, complete uh, uh, partition we observe that a complete partition so we can say that sample space has been partitioned into uh, 3 3 region okay this we call it m1 3 part yeah or a partition with three member so usually from the question we come up with the partition of the sample space okay this one m1 m2 m3 are talking about partition of sample space next set of information is given to us that of the parts m1 makes seven percent happens to be defective what is that that means we are having information about m1 after that we come to know that uh, among the part made by m1 uh, seven percent happens to be defective so call this uh, being defective part d even d so what is the property of d given that m1 that uh, uh, given that those part are manufactured by machine one or machine m1 then what is the property of being defective property of being defective it is 0.07 7 percent in 0 0.07 likewise uh, of the part m2 makes 50 percent uh, which are defective okay so property of d given m2 it is 0.15 likewise property of uh, uh, <coughs> d given being defective that came from machine 3 and uh, that property is 0 0.30 okay 30 percent are defective so all these are information given here the question is coming that we have to find what is the probability of defective parts okay the that property of d so just we are going to calculate property of d so easily you can see that what would be property of d so d event is here like this way so d is having outcome shared with m1 m2 m3 all all these so that's way here simply we can say that uh, d is what it is d you can write as d intersection m1 union d intersection m2 union d intersection m3 and after that uh, apply the probability concept law of total probability from the law of to total probability you come to see that probability of d is equal to sum of this probability okay and you simplify that you are getting probability 0.117 this is the way to calculate probability of an event based on um, partition scenario that means scenario definitely it would be given to you otherwise you can introduce scenarios from your uh, perspective what would be con convenient to you so i will take another example there you will see such, such situa situation so one chase tournament is there in chase tournament you enter a chase tournament where your probability of winning a game is 0.3 against 50 percent uh, half of the players or 50 percent of the player so those 50 percent of the player we are calling it type 1 player and you are having probability of winning 0.4 against quarter a quarter of the player that means ne next 25 percent of the player that we are calling it type 2 player okay type 2 uh, type 2 player against which you are having probability of winning uh, 0.4 now you are having probability of winning 0.5 against remaining 25 percent of the player that means that we are calling it type 3 so here you play a game against a randomly uh, chosen uh, opponent then here question is what is the probability of winning so you can call this this is probability of winning so winning against that opponent you can call that event a and a smartly define a partition of the sample space so here sample space is what 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 is the sample space anyone would like to comment 
what would be sample space anyone are you able to listen me so what is sample space here total number of players uh, it's fine but uh, actually what total number of players what Who, what kind of players against uh, those player which falls in the opponent category those would be in the sample space did you get it so that's where here uh, that would falls and so we come up with uh, uh, that uh, partitioning of the opponent player so we are calling it bi the event of playing with opponent of type i and what is the property of b1 then b1 is 0.5 b1 is type uh, opponent of type 1 uh, that one is 50 percent so 0.5 what is b2 b2 opponent of type 2 those are 25 percent that's why 0.25 uh, b3 is opponent of type 3 and how many uh, are those those are uh, 25% next 25% so that we are calling it type 3 so 0.25 so usually we got a partition of all the opponent player all the opponent player has been partitioned into three <coughs> member of the partition call it b1 b2 b3 and the probability is given here probability is given question now we are saying a be the event of winning okay and if a be the event of winning further what is given here if opponent is coming from type 1 then what is your probability of winning 0.3 this one is given here you can see so if opponent is coming from b1 then probability of winning is 0.3 a is the probability win winning event okay uh, event of winning so probability of winning if uh, player are coming from b1 is 0.3 if uh, uh, you are uh, fighting uh, playing against uh, uh, type 2 player then probability of winning would be given that that players are coming from uh, type 2 category then probability of winning is 0.4 Point four. Likewise, if uh, given that uh, player are coming from type three category, that means from B three, it is B three. The probability of winning is what? It is point five. Okay. Point five. So you got everything. Now, what is A? A is having definitely A is having some probability. You can observe positive probability always. So A, A is having probability uh, uh, with respect to each partition member. Partition member. So that's where what would be probability of A? Probability of A, we can just uh, find it through law of total probability. This is the law of total probability, and we are having all these. Uh, individual probability then just uh, simplify this and you will get probability is 0 0.37 0 0.375 this is the desired probability now i would like to ask one question here regarding very simple question uh, everyone might be aware of this uh, probability of uh, a complement what is the probability of a complement it the probability of a anyone Why? Why it is that? Because we know that if you are having a sample space and we come up with one event A, then the outcome which are not in A will fall in A complement. So A complement and A both brings always a partition with two members always if you come up with a or any event a and take a complement then both brings a partition of a sample space with 
two members only there would be two members and we know that uh, these are mutually exclusive there is no common element between a complement and a also if you take union union would be the complete sample of space so it is a proper pure partition proper partition what we call we can say that so if you talk about some of the probability so it is union so some of the probability of a complement and property of a it would be equal to one and from here you can deduce it is due to partition now same question is coming uh, uh, if i'm asking <coughs> what the probability of a complement given b anyone what is the property of a complement given b Anyone would like to highlight? Just try to answer it. Don't worry about whether it is wrong or right. <laughs> stop, stop. Up to it is not up to that. Uh, it is just a probability of a one minus probability of a given b it, it would be only so here uh, i told that b the partial information it is your new sample space in which what you do when you are trying to calculate probability of uh, conditional probability that condition on b so what you see that you try to look outcome of a uh, within b whether uh, those are present or not so what will happens so if you are having a you have already seen b first uh, you have seen already b first and you come up with event a okay and you try to see uh, in uh, in this b how much of uh, uh, this one is how much of uh, a are in b within b try to see so simply if you try to see so if you during the process of condition uh, we will say that we can if suppose outcome few outcomes of a are here then complement would be a complement would be those outcome of a those outcome of b which are in not a that will falls in a complement so that is the scenario this situation it is coming so again it is giving a partition a partition of it is giving partition from the perspective of okay like intersection way also you can say like this way so <coughs> so that's where here property i have defined property of a complement given b it would be equal to one minus property of a given b did you get it did you get it or not now i will ask another another question yeah, I will ask another question. What is the uh, complement of probability of this one? Uh, probability of A complement, B complement. Anyone? Do you see any relation of this one with uh, probability of uh, A complement given B? Is there any relation? There would be no relation. It would be just probability of a because here just we, we are giving attention to b complement only here b complement is seen to us so it would be property of a given we have to look into b complement only so this this one is the partial information this one is our new sample space we don't have to look beyond of this one we have to confine to this one okay up to this so that's where uh, all these are very much important. You have to focus on what is your, uh, what is the personal information, uh, information uh, where you have put uh, conditioning. So that that is from with respect to that you have to find the probability of complement in the in the case of conditional probability. So these are very much essential technique. You, you will need uh, various uh, such kind of probability later. You will see that. So now we are starting base rule. Bayes rule again I would like to say that it is again one another restatement of uh, the definition of conditional probability so how we define Bayes rule so 
<coughs> we define base rule uh, by again restating the definition of conditional probability that will lead to base rule how it will it is coming like this way so we have re restated the conditional probability definition of conditional probability like this way and we got multiplication rule here this say that uh, first we have already observed a first that's where this joint probability has been factored into probability of a and probability of b given a but suppose someone has observed b first so in that case this joint probability would be factored into probability of a into probability of b but uh, these two are actually talking about the joint probability of a and b in together so uh, talking the same same talking about same joint properties so that's where these two are equal to each other so we will focus on only these two quantity we will forget joint probability of a uh, intersection b we'll focus on these and if you simplify it then from here what we will see that we will get that probability of b given a is actually equal to probability of b times probability of uh, a given b divided by probability of a this one is your base rule this one is your base rule what we say that and uh, now further if you try to see uh, uh, from the definition of uh, uh, conditional probability again it is all about conditional probability uh, how you understand it so conditional probability say that if you, from the definition of conditional probability you will see that you would you would like to define probability of a given b how you will define it from the definition of conditional probability anyone it would be probability of B intersection A divided by probability of B in the probability of A that is the partial information. So that's why we are writing like this way. Now uh, focus uh, here. We are having idea of A. A is already occurred. We, we know about that. We are having that idea. But also in the process of defining this probability probability of B given A, uh, how we can uh, define this uh, uh, probability, this joint probability. So we have to apply again here multiplication rule. So we will break this one as uh, probability of B or factor in times probability of A given B. We are factoring like this way, divided by probability of A. So here you will see that what is happening that here uh, you can say that uh, A is the event, A is the event, B, B is the scenario that you can say that uh, you come up with. Uh, you can say that uh, uh, this one is also talking about probability of B. This one is also talking about probability of B. But what is the difference between these two? Here there is an involvement of two probability of B. This probability is just unconditional probability. Uh, just it is unconditional probability. We are not seeing any conditioning. Just we are finding the probability of B. It is conditional probability of B given A. So this probability we are calling it prior probability of B and this we are calling it posterior probability of B. This we are calling it posterior. posterior and this we are calling it prior probability what generally we got it from the sample space okay prior probability and after that in prior probability we multiply this factor and divide by this we do little bit modification so if all this modification happens happens to be in a very positive way then definitely this posterior probability would increase or that would update so the base rule is talking about such updated probability so this week we can talk it updated probability there are many other concept as well you can also say that uh, like this way later first let us generalize this one so suppose we are having a partition of the sample space of omega BIs are defining partition of a sample space omega. Okay. Then, if you are taking any event A with the positive probability, then how we can define probability of BI given A? BI given, remember that, just remember that 
anyone would like to highlight what would be hypothesis here and what would be conclusion anyone if you know about implications like uh, uh, you might have already somewhere gone through that uh, first order logic that uh, you might have already seen that implication kind of a statement so if you are having an implication a statement like a p implies q then p always we say that it is hypothesis hypothesis and q is the conclusion call it conclusion conclusion okay so uh, from here anyone would like to hi uh, highlight which which would be uh, hypothesis and which would be con conclusion anyone you are started with hypothesis and you finally in, in try to conclude with conclusion that is the approach uh, that uh, last outcome happens to be conclusion that is the approach in general in implication what we say so here uh, anyone what would be hypothesis here no idea so here in the sample space you are started with this partition of sample space you are started with you come up with uh, some idea this one is your hypothesis that partition introduce your hypothesis and whatever know about uh, partition of the sample space that one is the part of hypothesis and uh, now uh, after that you come up with event a so what if, so event a it falls in the conclusion part so you can say that this hypothesis another name of hypothesis also you can say that causes all these are causes okay origins and con conclusion also you can say that these are the effect these are the effect okay so these are the causes vi's are the causes and a is the effect okay so that also we can see that so here we are trying to find here some somehow uh, like uh, uh, definitely if someone is willing to in investigate in investigate a person whether that person is having cancer or not then it uh, uh, it is come to know that that person is having cancer then you have to find the regions you have to find the causes that leads to cancer so here um, bayes rule is playing very important role so that's where we are finding the probability of bi is given a once we are having idea of a we come to know idea of a or uh, a happens to be conclusion kind of thing so how we will define it through conditional definition of conditional probability we simply define uh, like this way the probability of bi intersection a divided by probability of a now further what we do here we apply multiplication rule what would be that bi are known to us very much we know the probability of bi so uh, probability of b joint probability of bi intersection a it would be what probability of bi times probability of a given bi easily we can break into this uh, factor into this uh, by using multiplication row rule now next talk about probability of a how we can calculate probability of a again we can calculate probability of a by using law of total probability this we are getting through law of total probability so simplify this one you will see that uh, uh, what kind of uh, what is the probability that the particular cause uh, what is the probability of particular cause that leads to the following conclusion a that you will come to know once you are you will have idea that uh, about that conclusion so you can so it is all about uh, what is happening that uh, uh, here uh, probability of b it is directly coming from hypothesis so we call it again here we call this one uh, prior probability we hypothetical probability of prior probability also you can call it so once you, you proceed with prior probability okay then you come up with that a conclusion then next task would be that uh, what is the posterior probability you have to calculate the posterior probability once you come to know a then you have to calculate the posterior probability 
what is the posterior probability so the relation between prior probability and posterior probability is given by Bayes rule that you can say that so there is another literal way we can say that there are a number of causes that may result in certain effect and we observe the effect so effect a what i am calling it effect and we try to infer the cause what is the probability of <coughs> probability of that cause that may have leads to uh, the particular effect or cancer or something else like that so that is the base theorem okay so few more few there are few examples it is already over 45 minutes uh, so one example that we are talking about false positive it is really interesting that once i had discussed about false alarm so in the similar framework false positive is coming coming here uh, generally in rare disease so so this problem we will discuss in next class which is already over 45 minutes regarding attendance just put your roll number there